All right, Matthew, we've got lesson 13-3, spheres. All right, so our question today is explain why the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, but a hemisphere, which is supposed to be half of a sphere, is 3 pi r squared, which doesn't make sense. If, it's, if a hemisphere is half of a sphere, shouldn't this be half and shouldn't this be 2 pi r squared? Well, not quite. All right, so a sphere, of course, um, is like a ball or something like that, or the earth or something like that. So we've got a circle with a radius, and the radius is, on, is going to be our only measurement in a sphere because no matter what I connect to the center, that's a radius. So that's a radius up there. This to the edge over here is also a radius. Everything's a radius in here. So the only measurements that we really care about in this sphere are radii. Because anywhere in that sphere from the center to the edge is going to be a radius. So in a sphere, we're going to look at two different things the, uh, for this. We're not just going to look at volume. We're also going to look at surface area uh, as we go through spheres. Now, I don't know if you've ever like taken apart like a baseball. You know how they have like the stitching all around it? Well, you can cut away that stitching and pull apart the outside. And if you've ever done that, you will notice this, that I'm just going to sketch this. This isn't going to look great, but just go with me here. So if you take apart a baseball, you get two pieces of leather, kind of look like dumbbells like that. One goes that way, and then another one goes the other direction like when you pull it apart. This is really bad. Okay, just, just go with me here. So it looks like you get two dumbbells when you pull apart the outside of a baseball. And this really helps us with visualizing the surface area, which is the outside, like the part of the ball you would actually touch. It helps us visualize what is actually making up the outside of that shape. What actually makes up the outside of a baseball is a circle here, a circle here, a third circle over here, and then a fourth circle over here. And then you got little pieces of leather that kind of join them together, but those aren't really necessary for the actual outside of the shape. We notice that baseballs or really any type of ball that you pull apart, is made up of four separate circles. And so if we're talking about the surface area of this shape, this means that I'm going to have four areas of a circle. So pi r squared. I'm going to have four of them from the outside of the shape. Try it. Take a baseball. Prove me wrong. If you take it apart, you got four circles. That's what the outside of a sphere is made of, is four separate circles. Of course, they're kind of bent in on each other and covering the whole outside, but it's four circles. So the surface area of this, so the outside of the shape, notice we're talking about area, so it's flat, uh, two dimensions. We get four, and then this part is the area of a circle. So there's four areas of a circle on the outside of the sphere. Now, the hemisphere has three areas of a circle. Here's the area of a circle. Why is it three and why is it not two? Because a hemisphere is half of a sphere. Why does it have three and not two circles? Well, the reason is... Because when we cut it in half, we do have two circles on the outside. But when we cut it in half, we created a new circle down here. So the outside, the dome part, still has two circles in it. But then the bottom piece we've created by cutting into this shape, we've created a third circle. So if you only count the domed area, yes, that is two circles. But now that we have this flat circle on the bottom, that's where our third circle is coming from. All right, let's see if I can explain volume well enough for you. 
Okay, so when we normally did volume, we talked about volume was the base area times the height. Okay, so when we're looking at this as a sphere, where's the base? Well, normally the base, you know, we would say is kind of on a prism or a cylinder or something like that. It's the flat area. There's no flat. This is all one big curve. So in a sphere, the whole outside is one big base. The whole outside is the base. And what we see here is if that's the base, then that's pi r squared. Well, what would be the height? Well, the heights are all these radii. They're perpendicular to the side, and they're all pointing to the same spot. So these are all our heights, which is another r. Now, the other thing that I'm noticing here is that all these radii are pointing to the same spot. That's kind of like a pyramid or like a cone. So normally when we had pyramids or cones, if we looked at our last lesson, we knew that when we made a pyramid or cone, we've got one third of the shape. Oh, I forgot something. Base area, it's four pi r squared. So our base area is four pi r squared for the outside of the sphere. Our height is the radiuses, because all these radii are pointing to the same spot. And since they all point to the same spot, it's like a pyramid or a cone, and we're going to use this one-third. Let's put this all together. One-third times four, four-thirds. R squared times R, R to the third. So that's why the volume of a sphere is four-thirds pi R squared. The four pi, or cube, sorry. The 4 pi r to the second is the outside, the base area, so the sphere's outside. The height is all these radiuses going to the same spot. That's another r. And then we add the 1 third because they're all pointing to one spot, which is kind of like what happens with a pyramid or a uh, cone. So we got 1 third times 4 pi r squared times r which if we put it all together is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now pay attention to the third power here. This one's to the second, but when we do volume, it's cubed. Now the volume of a hemisphere, half of a circle, is 2 thirds. So a half of 4 thirds is 2 thirds. And so since we're talking about the inside of the shape, yeah, if you cut that sphere in half, you're just going to get half the shape. So 2 thirds pi r cubed. All right, example one, a sphere has a radius of eight. Find the surface area and the volume. All right, so sphere, the surface area, is going to be four pi r, and r is eight, squared, so this is 64. And then four times 64 is 256, I think so. 256 pi, and this is going to be meters squared because it's area. Area is always counting the squares. If we want to do volume, we do 4 thirds pi r cubed. And in this case, r is 8. Okay, so I'm going to do 8 times 8, which is 64. And then 8 times, or 64 times another 8 is 512. So this is 4 thirds pi times 512. Now, 3 does not go into 512. I can tell because 5 plus 1 plus 2 is 8. And 3 doesn't go into 8, so 3 is not going to go in there. So if I wanted to answer this as the exact number, 4 times 512, let's see, 2 times 512 is 1024, 1024 times 2 is 248, so 2048 over 3 
pi. So there's the exact answer. Now, if you wanted, again, to um, do an approximation of an answer, remember, you would just take your calculator like we did in the last section, and we just do, okay, 2048 pi divided by 3, it'd give us 2,100 and about 45. So this is approximately 2145. All right, next one. The surface area of a sphere is 64 pi. Find the volume. Okay, so on problems like this, we're going to just write down our equation or our, our equations. We're going to write down our formulas. So the surface area formula for a sphere is 4 pi r squared because it's four circles on the outside of the shape. So 4 pi r squared. All right, so this one says that the surface area is 64 pi, but I want to find the volume. Volume is one-third, no, four-thirds, pi r to the third. Now, again, the only thing we need in either one of these equations is r. So they're starting us off on surface area, so I can use this, plug it in for surface area, and solve for r. And then once I know what r is, I can plug it into this equation over here. So let's see what we get. So we're going to do... Surface area is 64 pi. Okay, we're going to divide both sides by 4 pi. Pi is a number, so it can be divided just like anything else. The pi's cancel out over there, and I get 16 equals r squared. So now I know that the radius is 4. Once I know that the radius is 4, I can take this and plug it into the other equation and find my volume because R was the only thing I'm missing to find volume. So I do 4 thirds pi times 4 to the third power. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. So 4 times 64 is 256. So the exact answer is 256 over 3 pi b cubed. Or if we want to plug it out into our calculator, we do 256 pi divided by 3, which comes out to approximately uh, 268, let's call it. So approximately 268 b cubed. All right, those are the basic ones. Let's do this next one. All right, so I've got like, I don't know, what's that look like? It looks like uh, one of those, uh, the, the ice, the shaved ice. It's like a little shaved ice thingy. Yeah, kind of, maybe, I don't know. So anyways, I've got two different shapes in the solid. Looks like I've got a hemisphere and I've got a cone. So I'm going to find the volume of the hemisphere and add to that the volume of the cone. And that should give me the volume of the entire solid. So a hemisphere's uh, volume is 2 thirds pi r to the third. Don't forget third, not the second. A lot of people make that mistake and do second. Remember, it's supposed to be in units cubed, so that's why we know it's to the third power. And then for my coon, it looks like I'm going to use pi r squared times the height. All right, so r for both of these looks like it's going to be 9. So I'm going to do 2 thirds pi, and then this is going to be 9 to the third power. Let's just finish that one off. 9 to the third power is 729, so this is 2 thirds pi times 729. Now 3 does go into 729, 
uh, goes in there to 43, 243 times. Uh, so what we can do is take 729, divide by 3, and then multiply by 2. So if I take 729 times 3, no, divided by 3, go back, divide by 3, and then times 2, I get 486. So my volume for the hemisphere is 486 pi. All right, let's look at the cone. So for the cone, I've got 9 for my radius, and I'm squaring, and then my height over here is 12. So 9 squared is 81. And then 81 times 12 ends up being 972. These are like terms. They're both in terms of pi. So I can take 972 and add 486 to it. And I end up with 1458 pi. And that would be in centimeters cubed. And again, if I wanted to, what I could do is just take 1458 pi on my calculator. Oh, it gives me that answer in pi, so I hit the side-to-side -side button that's way down here, the side-to-side -side button. I don't know what the actual name of that button is. I just call it side-to-side. -side. All right, so, and that tells me that it's about 4,580-ish. So 4,580. All right, there we go. 13-3, done, in the can. All right, we only have one more lesson for the whole year. Then we're done with COVID, hopefully forever. All right, see you guys later. Math hard. Bye-bye.